And this is not a theme park. This is a kingdom. And not just any ordinary kingdom, a kingdom of coasters. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kingdom of Coasters, the largest megalithic theme park containing seven themed areas using the entire sandbox map. 19 roller coasters, 12 flat rides, two dark rides, one water ride, and a whopping three transport rides. And of course, some shops and facilities. Good googly moogly. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one you're definitely not going to want to miss out on, so stay tuned and let's check it out. Hey yo, my planet coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Today we're going to be looking at Kingdom of Coasters Mega Theme Park created by Druck Luft Deathliv. That is a, a wowzer of a name there. Here they say, Hey Channel 5 gaming community, this is my first ever park created at Planet Coaster. Description is on the Steam Workshop. Enjoy the journey and please give me feedback for going into my second park. P.S. I already submitted my park, but since then I changed my Discord name, therefore I submitted it with my new correct name. Okay, and the uh, Steam Workshop basically was my introduction. I used it to uh, give a brief introduction there. So it is in fact their first ever theme park. They were looking for some feedback for their next one. I have so much B-roll. I think I was recording for 11 or 12 minutes, just getting incredible shots of this park. As you can see, 19 different amazing looking coasters across the spanning seven thieves. I just didn't know where to go. I was taking the camera everywhere and I wanted to get a good look at everything for this introduction. If I could add anything to this introduction, the park was posted December 6th and updated February 13th of this year. Plus in the submission box, it arrived March 20th, 2024, which is actually last Wednesday. So it is a brand new theme park. And this creator seems ambitious enough to get started on another. So it couldn't be better timing. You submitted it, boom, you're getting featured. We could talk about it. And then you could take all that and go straight into your next park. So if this is one thing I'm gonna ask of you guys here today, please do fire away down in the comments what you liked about the park what you'd like to see better about the park where the creator can improve give as much of your feedback as possible throughout this hour two hour long experience and uh make a big bullet point notes of what you think this creator should do for the future as they are looking to improve and looking to build another massive park like this so as much feedback as possible is definitely going to be appreciated as the creator is asking for it and i will try to do the same thing myself as we go along but i should have talked long enough to show you guys all the b-roll why don't we jump in in person and take a look at all of this amazing stuff first hand let's go okay welcome welcome ladies and gentlemen we are getting off the tour buses here amazing hedge gardens here we have a whopping giga coaster towering right over the park entrance there and uh there's the sign there the kingdom of coasters i'm actually quite surprised this is the first park we've been to in a while that is testing my new rig we're getting about 20 frames per second overall um so it's it, in some areas i'm looking at the whole park right now right everything is in view so it depends on where we go where we're looking and that sort of thing but I'm going to try to take it a little bit slow, take it easy here today so that we can uh, at least slow down the frames a little bit. I have gone ahead and let uh, 6,000 guests into the park. I let the park run for a good 10, 15 minutes. So they have evenly dispersed everywhere throughout the end-to-end uh, -end megalithic park. So we should have a good, uh, a s good spread of guests everywhere guests on all the attractions and we're kicking things off here with the fantasy area already gotta <clears throat> commend you the ambience is great great sounds very very good beautiful looks like a junior wendigo there are coasters everywhere with 20 coasters in the park two dark rides get your popcorn strap up we're gonna be here for a hot minute and we're just gonna go back to back to back 
coaster after coaster. Timestamps should be in the description below if you want to skip ahead to any of the coasters. But if you want to journey with me and take a look at all the amazing theming, stay tuned for the whole journey then. Fantasy's looking really good. I think fantasy, in my opinion, is one of the more challenging themes to do because of all the uh, pieces available in the toolkit are very much samey. A lot of fantasy ends up feeling the same. It's thatched buildings, little huts, uh, little uh, medieval buildings and castles, right? How do you do something to make it stand out? And it's really gonna come down to the landscaping, the terrain, the vistas, and how you gone about doing that sort of thing. Now, there are many people have made fantasy work really, really well, and I have seen some outstanding stuff, but I think it takes a little bit of extra effort. So the flat rides are dead. Um, even though I let 6,000 guests in the park, it's not gonna be enough to get them all on everything because the guests are gonna want to go towards the coasters. One thing I am uh, a little bit claustrophobic here, and I'm trying to look around for a main path, a main street. There doesn't seem to be any clear main street. That's my first immediate feedback. I like to know where I'm going and how to get there. So a little bit more of a, a main guiding path like that. That scoot us off to a dead end. We got a little bit lost and now we're back here again. So there's no like a really central flow. I'd take the wider paths, 10 or 12 meter and try to like create a central avenue, if that makes sense. And then branch around that and tie back into it. Um, and with that being said, we walk into the park, I get a little bit lost, go through all these nooks and crannies, but not yet have found a queue for a coaster. Until this, the Dragon Scout. Now there's clearly a Junior Wendigo over there. So I'm curious to know where the entrance for that is. Maybe I missed it. But we're going to hit them all up here today. Nice little torch lighting in the queue here. Ah, nice opening composition there. Got the Rapunzel Castle, the top of the Giga Coaster lift. Very cool. Mm hmm. Fun, cozy little barn. Oh, this is the Junior. Interesting. I uh, totally thought we were going to be getting on that coaster back there. The uh, looks to be like a an Intamin Blitz style coaster, a launch of some sort. It's the Junior Dragon. There's a look at the results if you want to see them. Almost a kilometer in length, 43 miles per hour. A little bit of airtime as well. Actually pretty excited about this. The uh, terrain, the layout, and the traversal looked pretty intriguing to me from the outside when I was getting the B-roll and all that. I love these long trains so we're gonna ride the back of the train here and off we go a full load would you look at that
Oh my god. That was actually wicked sick. So much so that I feel like we got to give it another go in track view here. Uh, again, I said the uh, track length and the, the traversal of this looked very intriguing to me. To my surprise, it was even better than I anticipated. I love how it's just going up and down, up and down around the lake. And then we dive into the caves there. Really smart laying the track beside your Giga Coaster there as well. They almost like lined up perfectly and kind of uh, were gliding through the kingdom together side by side and for an end-to-end -end mega park there's just stuff everywhere so the coaster actually has to traverse the theme park and that just means there's so much to look at there's so much theming and there's just a ton of noise and craziness going on i absolutely love it let's give it another go here in track view Jeez Louise, if the junior coaster is that intriguing and that fun to ride, what are the uh, other coasters such as the Giga Coaster back there going to be like? I mean, good gracious. This is going to be an exciting journey here today just off the back of that junior there. I mean, wow. That is super impressive. A great way to kick off the episode. I love a good junior coaster. And when they're taken to that explorative uh, heights, the dragon hunt, the fonts are really bad, by the way. The default fonts, and that's not really the creator's fault, but yeah, I don't know. You could either make your own or try to use a different font that's in the game. You use the fantasy font, which is a smart choice on paper. <laughs> it just doesn't look that great in my opinion, but it is what it is. All right, the soldiers are lining up for battle. They are getting ready to hunt a dragon, according to the name of the coaster here. Pretty exciting stuff. All right, castle walls have crumbled. This is really cool. I'm feeling it. I'm in it. We got jesters and stuff doing their bardic dance, cheering on the soldiers. Very cool. I like it. Oh, big fire there with the coaster going through. That's awesome. So I'm assuming this is going to simulate a dragon flight. Are we the dragon on this coaster? I would imagine so. Almost two kilometers in length, 92 miles per hour. The biggest drop is 85 meters. How many, uh, 85 meters to feet is 278 feet. All right. And uh, a total of nine airtime counts and almost 10 seconds of airtime as well. It is green across the board. It is the... Ah! <laughs> It is the dragon hunt. I guess we'll do track view for the smoothest ride experience possible. And uh, I don't know if it's gonna have much nighttime lighting considering how tall this coaster is, but maybe we can give it a ride another way. I'm just trying to think with 22 dark, uh, 22 coasters and dark rides and water rides throughout this park, uh, riding them all twice is gonna end up being a four hour episode. So I'm gonna have to pick and choose as we go. But riding that Wendigo twice was definitely worth it. All right, here we go.
Wow, freaking way! Definitely a smooth experience overall. While we might not be able to see the coaster at night, I have a feeling that we'll be able to see a lot of the park from this coaster. Looks like there's four trains running on this as well. Very impressive with all the uh, block sections you put in. They were nicely spaced apart. We uh, traversed so far out, we actually went almost into the Caribbean area there. And the way you snuck this in, gliding across the edges of the map, is really quite impressive. There's a lot of coaster here, and I'm quite a fan. Going right over the park entrance there. There's a look at the park at nighttime, and uh, we're going to see some fire, volcanoes, and some other things from this nighttime POV. So let's check it out. Fire and brimstone. I love it. I mean, I'm trying to think of feedback for these experiences, and I'm not really coming up with anything at this moment other than the uh, the layout of the park. I feel like um, we're almost like cornered. See, like that's North Northland over there. I don't know what Northland is, but I feel like we're on an off skirt path right now. It doesn't really feel like a main path to me. And that is because of the width that you chose and the fact that we're like all the exits of the rides are there. So maybe just a little bit more planning in terms of layout of your park, where things are going to go and where your main strips are and how they're going to carry you from one area to the next. But other than that, like both the coaster experiences were phenomenal. I really enjoyed them i think thematically and journey wise you're telling a story you're showcasing some great environments giving us some amazing vistas and exploration along the way and those make for the most fun experiences in my opinion so really good storytelling and narrative through coaster design and all that good stuff so hats off to the creator for that so far and there's the monorail there you said you use three transport rides i probably would have suggested using a train ride to connect your or a boat ride or something to connect fantasy to Caribbean and then use the monorail for your sci-fi and uh, alpine style areas, right? If you're going to do that many transport rides, you might as well keep them thematic. But that's just, uh, I'm pulling at straws here for feedback. See, I was wondering how do we get to this coaster, and I haven't seen a queue yet. So I wanted to go down this path to see where it led, and uh, it just goes around the lake and loops us back. So this here is, in fact, the main path which is strange to me because this is the only way to get anywhere in the park. And, and something about it feels too narrow, too claustrophobic, and all the traffic has to go through this one route. There's no other way to, unless I missed it, but this seems to be the only way you can go. And generally it's a good idea to make a fork. You come into the park, you can go left, you can go right, you can go straight down, and you have options and then give us some signs pointing us which way we're going to go. Uh, as I don't really have a choice in the matter, we're going to Northland. Not the end of the world, but all the guests are also funneling down this way. Where in Northland do I go? There's an exit to a ride and also a queue. Let's check this out. The Highlander, like the name on that. So it's a bit of a Viking theme in somewhat of a Alpine area. Alpine Viking. Very cool. And it looks to me like it is a wooden coaster. Oh, wow, look at that. You have a cascade going through it. I definitely love this interaction here. You have the queue for one ride. Oh, are they dual synchronized? Oh, wow. You have the queue for one ride going over top another ride. 
so far, the kind of interactions between the coasters has been next level, something I don't see very often. We saw that with the previous two coasters as well. So let's take a look at the Highlander here. 1.5 kilometers in length, 80 miles per hour, uh, about six seconds of air time on that. Very, very good. Uh, this one's just going up the lift now, so we might as well uh, ride this. Let's do the back. Here we go. Holy freaking Toledos. I am super impressed by that layout. A lot of the times when we go on these woodies, we just see like a, a really good wooden layout off on the back hills of a park. What you did well with this in particular is the way you scaled the terrain with the coaster. We're going up, the terrain goes up. So the coaster is actually gliding up and over the terrain, but then you wove it back in and through the terrain and then even built all the mine shafts, all the wooden supports holding it together. Uh, the, just going through the tunnels, weaving in and out, all very, very impressive stuff to me. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed that wooden coaster. Exit only, thank you for that as well. I gotta say the uh, audio is just over the top. I can barely hear myself thinking that's generally a good thing. That looks to be like a cue for the monorail, the park express i mean if the monorail takes you to every area of the park i don't i'm not mad at it definitely with seven themed areas not a bad idea so i don't know how viable my previous comment was but all right the nord very cool gate so far the coaster gates have not been too over the top using basic um planet coaster fonts but that gate in particular looked really cool So if there's one thing maybe you can improve for next time, you don't even have to make the fonts, just download them. Custom Theme Maker Toolkit fonts and uh, just jazz it up a little bit. Okay, so this here is the Water Cascade coaster that was interacting and almost synchronized with the wood in there and that dropped down the queue that we were previously on. So there we go. We're checking them out in order. One kilometer in length on this one as well. A little bit of air time and top speeds of 60 miles per hour on this boat ride here. Uh, I think this is like the only viable view to ride these in. So we're gonna have to check it out this way.
<laughs> Good freaking googly moogly. I love this uh, Viking Lake setting. That first drop down there where we got to soak in the, the longhouse, the bridges there. There's a big hammer swing back there where you custom built all of the theming on that. It's absolutely incredible. I really love it. Now, I am going to assume that the creator did download a lot of stuff from the workshop as I did, I did even see some of my own builds in this park. So I've said this time and time before, it's okay to download other people's theming, other people's creations uh, to fill out your theming, right? As long as you're building your own park, you're building your own coasters and you're designing the theme park and designing the layout, it's totally okay to, uh, to use other people's creations to help you save some time. Cause you could spend days, hours, weeks on just certain buildings, shops and facilities. Whereas uh, downloading them can literally just be done in the moment of just clicking download and then finding a way to work it in. Some of this Viking stuff, I feel like I've seen some of it before, possibly even this hammer swing, I'm not entirely sure. So I guess in the future, if you are using other people's things, it doesn't hurt to point out who and what and where. I know it's hard to do that. Like, I don't know if the creator made this hammer or they downloaded it, but it is phenomenal. That is so well done using the sci-fi pipes for the handle there. Oh my god. Hey, thanks. I was trying to look at that. <laughs> um, and the uh, gingerbread icing offset with black. I mean, that is just incredible. What a beautiful display of creativity there. I feel like I've seen this before in one of our shop con or ride skin contests, but I could be wrong. I've seen something very similar to it at the very least. So one thing you can say in your description is like, hey, I built 80% of this myself or 60% because it is hard to say like so-and-so made this, so-and-so made that, but it doesn't hurt to do that if you can. Just make an Excel sheet or something. Every time you download something, just write copy paste the name but yeah even if you did not build all this stuff you've created the compositions and that's what i'm ooing and awing over as we drop down to the lake through the drop down on that uh, first splash on the cascade we got to look at all of this stuff and it was really really cool very captivating scenes uh one thing i will say for feedback for the cascade you did three lifts what you can do is uh instead of actually creating a splash down you can fake it with uh a river rapids so you put a river rapids over top of the track and you can make the water splash up and you won't lose momentum on the coaster but you'll still go through the water so you can actually make the coaster gain uh keep its momentum for much much longer if you simulate fake fake splashdowns and you could do that like as it's coming down here right and if it if it hits a, a little river rapids it creates a splash but it doesn't stop it doesn't slow down so something to play around with for next time for as a, a little bit of feedback for that ride so as i talked about the pathing before i guess the one benefit to doing like one straight path it's kind of forcing us through an experience. Go this way, go on that ride, get off, go this way, go on that ride, get off, go this way, and so on and so forth, right? So you are sort of like directing the experience by one linear uh, pathway navigation, but I also feel a little restricted, a little claustrophobic at times, and my options feel extremely limited. I would just open things up a little bit more is, is all right? Just a little bit more open-ended layouts for each of the areas, giving us a little bit uh, more choices on where we want to go. This is quite nice. But other than that, I'm liking everything I'm seeing so far. So the Town Guard, what are we dealing with here? Another kilometer long coaster. It's a launch, 70 miles per hour, or 69, nice. Uh, seven inversions on this bad boy. Almost no airtime though. we will be sticking to our seats for this one here. And I guess for this, we'll do track view, trying to switch it up as we go. And off we go.
absolutely freaking wonderful. Great experiences yet again. I love that little bit of a heartline roll over the garden there or the crop field. Everything has been just an extravagant journey, an exploration. And I, I love a good exploration coaster. And so far, what we've been on four or five already, every single one has been over the top in terms of visuals and landscapes and Ex exploration. Hey, look at this. We got a fork in the road. Which way did I come down? The the first time I get a fork, I get lost. <laughs> but that is because the um, everything's narrow, right? So it's like a hard to pinpoint. There's no, I'm lost in the trees. I can't really say I've been there. I'm going here. I can't create a, a landmark or a point of interest from where I'm standing. So it is getting a little confusing. Okay, so we cross over that bridge, went down there and looped back around this way. So there is a divide in the path for once, but they lead back to the same spot. <laughs> oh no, that's funny. Okay, well, I have no idea if that was everything in the Viking area, but Pirate Bay has presented itself to us here so i'm up for it here we go i can already hear the music changing the vibe is changing and i love me some pirate so yar let's go see what it has to offer see a little boat ride putzing around this uh what is that dive coaster very cool wowie it's like a lake of coasters one thing I saw in the B-roll that you guys would have saw in the intro, I think it's the dive coaster. One of the coasters goes right through a ship. So this creator either built a ship or downloaded a ship, carved out the inside and made a coaster go right through it. And I thought that was super innovative. And there's a lot in this park that is pushing things to a new limit of creativity. Oh, look at that, medieval world. I, uh, I wanna go down there in a sec and see how it ties it in because I could have sworn there was only one way to go. There's an exit, where's my queue? Is this for the monorail? No. All right, let's find our way onto this coaster first. And then we'll get off and I, I wanna take a peek and see where the heck that path came from from Medieval World because I could have sworn I walked around every single path and only found one way to go. So I'm very, very curious. I haven't checked out a lot at nighttime yet other than the Giga Coaster, so. I'm gonna have to definitely do that. I see lanterns literally everywhere. Probably a little too excessive. I would have deleted every other lantern. That's gonna, it's gonna be a pain in the ass relighting all those. It's a lot of oil burning. Okay, here we are at, oh, it's one of those Hot the Gaps coasters. Uh, mouse hunt, wild mouse. Oh, it's a wild mouse. Not all hop the gaps. Okay, uh, about half a kilometer in length, 34 miles per hour. A very gentle, family-friendly ride. Uh, this is a, also an interesting one. What happens is this is one train, but they separate. They de-link, and they kind of like spread apart. These these three are going to take off ahead of us, I think. Yep. So we can kind of stay at the back and watch them all. I think that's kind of fun. Oh, you did a day-night sequencer. You want this to be nighttime. This could potentially be one of the uh, two dark rides. Very cool. All right, let's go. Interesting, the, the lighting changed like halfway through there and then the music cut out. Not sure what happened there, but very interesting indeed going around the uh, entirety of that castle there. Very, very cool. Okay, let's figure out where the heck this goes. Dragonstone, so there's uh, another ride. Oh, so I, I looped around here like twice and I, I did pass this, but I guess in my mind, I thought it was an exit or something. 
Hmm. Possibly. So that's good. At least there's like a, a branch. One to the pirate area, one to the um, Viking area. Just a little bit uh, off the beaten path though. All right? Okay, what do we got going on up here? Ooh. All right. We are climbing the castle to Dragonstone Keep. Yo, this is what I was looking for. Dragonstone, 1.4 kilometers in length. We're gonna jump right onto this because it's taking off a uh, track view. Let's go. All right, very cool. Wow. I have so much I want to say here. First of all, good thing I uh, decided to check out how these pathways interlinked because it brought us to the Dragonstone Coaster, which I had a feeling we had missed one and I just figured maybe it was on the other side of the mountain when in fact it was kind of up here at the intersection between the two themed areas. Uh, the other thought that crossed my mind when we were riding that coaster again is the over the top theming, the music choice, there's ambience everywhere. The coasters themselves all have like a, a theme that matches the name, the name of the coaster coaster says it all then you get on the coaster and you you feel that experience and i love that there's so much cohesion and it gives me uh if it, if anyone's like a super fan of the show or if our creator here of the day is a fan of the show if they're familiar with nimzel uh who creates the mkp park experiences these coasters are giving me mkp vibes just very thematic over the top really cool environments just you know action-packed storytelling through environmental storytelling on the art ride experiences themselves it's all just phenomenal. The one thing where I'd say it lacks is the actual navigation of the theme park. I just feel like it's uh, kind of linear as I mentioned earlier, and I'm having a hard sense of like where I'm gonna go next or what I'm gonna do. But the plus side to that, as I mentioned earlier, is it kind of just leads us from one ride to the next and it just like holds my hand along the way. Okay, Johnny, go here now. Okay, go now there. <laughs> it helps me get through it in a very timely and efficient way. So that is the one, the benefit to it. Whereas, uh, okay, so we have 1.2 kilometers in length. It is a dive coaster and uh, 67 miles per hour with the biggest drop being 60 meters and six inversions total on this. We got to go seat view middle seat for this. But as I was saying, um, with like a MKP park, he builds them very open and you enter a themed area through a big gate and you know you're you're there you know you're in the aztec area and you can see all the paths where you're gonna go all the points of interest all the landmarks and you could choose which ride of the three or four in that themed area that you want to head to so i would def i would definitely look at some of those for research and inspiration but so far you're nailing the theming the rides the experiences and here we go we're diving into a ship and the creativity love it all let's go
absolutely love it. Again, the name of the coaster was Shipwreck. And what do we do? We drop down, dive through the center of a shipwrecked ship, pop out the other side. The creativity of that is awesome. Diving through a ship like that. I loved it. Black Mouse. Is this the... Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, that was great. Absolutely love that. Environments skipping around the lake, big splashes, cannons, animatronics. Love to see it all. Absolutely amazing. Okay, do we go down this way? We have a choice again. I'm gonna assume this is gonna loop back and connect to that big long path. Oh, but we do have a ride. That's the Park Express. Oh, wow, look at that. Beautiful uh, composition there. A little sleepy dragon here. What did I say? <laughs> so, if this is the main path, the queue for the monorail should actually be here, in my opinion. Just so you can find, like, if you want to go to another area by transport, it should not be tucked off to the side, in my opinion. Minor, minor tweaks to park layout. But, uh, so far, this is a, a stunning experience through and through the uh i don't even know where you're hiding these speakers Are they in the trees where are you putting these things the ambience is incredible are they in the ground i, I don't even know where you put them hms victory Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like how you use the uh, street wires, the sci-fi wires for the ropes on the ship. I don't know if you did that or you downloaded the ship again. I'm not entirely sure, but I've never seen that done before. It makes it look a little bit knotted and scraggly. I quite like it. Oh, pirate ship. Oh, wait a second. We did a park spotlight not too long ago. I don't know if this is the exact one, but I remember commenting and saying, oh my God, you put a swinging ship inside of a ship. I am losing my mind. This is awesome. I don't know if this is the exact same one, if it takes inspiration from it or if you downloaded it. But again, it's brilliant. There's a ship inside the it's ship, shipception. <laughs> Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Okay, there's got to be some more rides that I, I'm missing the cues for. I don't know. It's all just looping me back around. I'm going to fly up. Okay, what's this? The Torture Tower. I guess it doesn't hurt to check this out. Because the uh, park is one of these end-to-end -end mega parks. The Torture Tower. What are you doing to us on this tower? Okay, here it goes. There's the Pirate Land. There's the Viking stuff way back there. You can get a sense of how massive this park is. We got a whole spooky haunted area up here. Uh, a sci-fi area over here. We saw Western at the very back. So we still have to go to the sci-fi, the spooky, the Western, and possibly a couple more. Well, so far we've been to what? Fantasy Viking. Oh yeah, there's like an Aztec jungle as well. So fantasy, Viking, pirate. So we still have four themed areas. Incredible, and I'm looking at my recording, it's almost an hour already. Super impressive. Megalithic Park, the cursed land, but I have a feeling there's a queue somewhere. I don't wanna find it. Lake Tour, that's for the boat ride. I think we can skip on the boat ride, mainly because the lake is so open, right? Actually, let's just take a look at it. I was gonna say it's just so open. I usually like, um, I guess this is a good talking point for feedback. If you had uh, the boat tour going between mountains, through jungly bushes, uh, in between crevices and canyons and stuff like that, uh, as well as like opening itself up to these piers and harbors is actually a pretty cool idea. But when it's such an open lake like this, uh, often what happens is you only get to see the stuff we already saw when we walked around the footpath. But look at that. You did squeeze in an extra little scene here that's exclusive to the boot boat tour. So that's pretty cool. But generally it's going around uh, doing what the coaster did, doing what we s saw when we uh, walked around the path that takes us all the way around the lake. 
Is there anything else on this that we haven't seen? These little extra sets is definitely a nice way to spice it up, though. So uh, I appreciate that. But um, it's not a transport ride. It is a tour. So I think in, in the future, <clears throat> making it a little bit more exclusive, taking you through the back ends of the park, you don't get to go by foot. You don't get to go by coaster. And it's in a completely new and exclusive area to the park is generally what I like to see from those boat tours. Okay, yeah, I was right about this. Okay, so Pirate Hunt is another ride of sorts. I knew that I, with all the coaster track there, I was like, there's got to be another coaster around here. And there, in fact, is what are we dealing with here? The Pirate Hunt. It is a bar cast, a gas lower coaster, and it is great across the board with almost a kilometer in length, 700 meters to be exact, and 61 miles per hour with five inversions. Whoa, look at that view. Uh, I wonder if we should actually ride a coaster like like that <laughs> we will do the track view and off we go Very, very cool. All right, so I think that's gonna wrap it up for the pirate area. A pretty solid pirate area overall, but mostly the, the pirate experiences were really, really fun. I think in the future, if you ever take a stab at pirate again, this whole thing is based around pirate ships, right? It's all on the water. There's a giant lake here. There's a bit of a Caribbean thing there, but there's not a lot of that pirate shantiness. And that generally comes when you build pirate into the back end of a mountain, like a, you know, big mountain volcano or something like that. And you cover it with all the shanty buildings and all those, yeah, like the, the shanty huts and stuff like that. Then you can have have, uh, you could cascade it up the side of a mountain, right? And then have your coasters going around and through that. So I think pirates are really hard to do. And, you, and in order to get a lot in there, you need to have a big landscape, a big tall landscape with lots of vistas and points of interest. You got to really go big. Uh, a lot of the times that I see pirate, it is like this. It's, it's built around a central lake on a very flat terrain. And it's very rarely that we see people elevate that and push it to the next level. So I definitely think you could uh, take another stab at this in the future. But what you you did here was really really solid i definitely enjoyed the ride experiences through and through i think next time just aim a little bit bigger you could do a beach coast water area on the side of a volcanic mountain and then cover that with shanty buildings and all that and then have the rides explore up and around and through that and we get a little bit more variety through the beachiness the tropicalness the dark mountain tops and then the uh just pirateify everything right go through all that wood and craziness okay now outpost 37, the sci-fi area. Let's freaking go. Some cool plants right away. What is this? What am I going down? This is the sci-fi area and I have to go up and through here? Or am I going down an exit? Huh, okay, let's just go with it. Go with the flow. Sci-fi is the first thing I ever started building in Planet Coaster and seeing this stuff brings me back. Makes me want to... I didn't quite finish my sci-fi build set, but I did do, like, a couple dozen sci-fi builds. And I got kind of, uh, flavor fatigued from it. The ground patrol. All right. Oh! This is the, um... Dual synchronized... I think it's even a Mobius-style racing coaster? Because, yeah, there's one station. The coaster comes back in. This is basically a block section. And then they leave together. So after we do a lap, we're going to end up here. And we're going to do the second lap over there. Very cool. This is the only way you could do dueling coasters back in the day. Because they didn't have the dual synchronized feature back then. So it is 1.2 kilometers in length. It's technically 600 per cycle. So, yeah, this one's taken off. We'll do seat view. Oh, maybe the second lap is nighttime? 
That would actually be pretty smart. I hope that's the case. Let's go. Well done. Good job uh, doing the sequencer like that. I love it. And the lighting looks great. Let's freaking go. Absolutely terrific. The uh, nighttime lighting on that just really brought to life all of that alien uh, floral that you put in there. It was really spectacular. Super smart adding in the day night sequencer to automatically switch it for us to give us a different experience the second time around. Track layout was good. The coasters were competitive. This is not an exit. We can go down here. The test flight. That's the queue. We're going to skip over it because this one's taken off right now. There's a look at the stats if you want to see them. Two kilometers in length. 81 meters is the biggest drop. I think it's like the, uh, ah, uh, it's taken off. I was going to say top thrill dragster too. <laughs> but yeah, that is a 81 meter drop at the top there. And we're going at max speeds of 106 miles per hour with 10 airtime counts and 11 seconds of airtime. Whoa. That is absolutely thrilling. I feel like we got to go seat view for this. So that's what we're going to do. And off we go. Oh, I made that spaceship right there. I made that. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely incredible. The one thing I have not given enough credit to or have not made a comment on so far is the variety of coasters and the uh, thematic usage of the coasters. Like having a top thrill dragster style coaster in the sci-fi area is very fitting and a, a very solid choice for, you know, your flight center, building it all around rocket ships. And this, in fact, is my build. Did you, you stripped off the Street Fox coffee shop stuff. <laughs> I had some, uh, basically this was rocket fueled coffee is what I called it. It was Street Fox coffee. There's a, sh there was a shop right here and you get your hot coffee right in here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I made a whole rocket just for a coffee shop way back in the day. And then this creator used it for their coaster. Very, very cool. And that's what made me believe that some of the stuff, I don't know if all of it, it could be all of it, but definitely some of the stuff has been downloaded. It. And to that point, guys, it doesn't make sense to come up with your own crazy alien bushes when you can just download them, right? Some of the stuff 
it's good to handcraft, personalize, like coaster signs, boarding stations, certain personal touches. Like, I, I, if I were to make a guess, I would feel like Enigmandra made this. She's the pumpkin queen. <laughs> Yeah, it's like certain things you can fill her. Uh, I also feel like I've seen this, the Reaper. In fact, I might have featured a Halloween park last year that had this in it. So I feel like I've seen that as well. But for just getting stuff in, you know, you could spend a week just building that Reaper right there or a good long day. Depends on how many hours you put into the game, right? But uh, some people build everything from scratch and that's when they're like in the submission. They're like, I've been working on this park for the last six years. <laughs> Whereas this creator could have probably done it in a quarter of the time if, uh, if they used other people's assets. And what this creator has specifically specifically done well is creating experiences, right? These coasters have been awesome. I've been really enjoying going on all of the rides and that's what's that's what's important here. So if you're the, uh, the puppet master, the one constructing the experiences, the design of the park is what is key. Not necessarily every little doodad, every little alien tree. So save yourself some time, if you, especially if you find this game intimidating or time consuming, right? Cut corners where you can. Enjoy the parts of Planet Coaster that you find the most enjoyable and use the community as leverage in the parts that you uh, lack or use the community in parts where you find less interesting and challenge yourself on the parts that you find difficult, right? It's really up to you whichever way you want to do it, but the community is there to help you. So we got the Cursed House, a 500 meter dark ride, uh, the first like actual track ride experience of this park so far. So let's check this out. Okay, I like the spin on it. At first, oh, we're not done there. Uh, <laughs> at first I was thinking, okay, pretty standard spooky mansion, out of the box planet coaster, uh, spooky expansion pack DLC. Then you took us into the crypts and the underground Hades lair. And I really, uh, I really liked and appreciated that. Nice little spin on it. Put your own little touch of creativity on it. As we've seen from all of your rides so far and a nice little uh, viewpoint, a balcony, showcasing all of the spooky area that we're gonna go check out in just a moment. Very, very cool. And we're not even done yet. There's a lot of uh, duration on this. Yeah, murder the spider. They don't deserve to live. Ugh. Even a dead spider's creepy. 
Oh my goodness. Oh wait, we're above the entrance now. We're not even close to done now. Good googly moogly. All right, I guess I'll shut up a little bit. Whoa, I love that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Okay, now we're, we're back down to the entrance. Anyways. S spooky lady with the top hat. Very creative. I love it. Great little huntsman there. Took a, like, a little creative twist of your own on there. Again, just everywhere we go, every ride experience we've uh, been on so far, you're doing something we've seen before, but elevating a little bit further. There's always like a little bit of uh, s s spice in there. Is this a cue for the... What the heck is this? Look at this cue. Ah! Definitely using the zoomies here. Oh my god. Oh, that is... I was gonna say, is that... I got duped. I got... I got you baited. I was like, there's no way this is gonna be the cue for the dark, uh, the flat ride. I thought it went into the building here, but people are going to and fro here. Oh, there's the cue here. The Baron's Curse. That's what I was looking for. And they're getting off that way. Whoa. Okay, we can, we can jump line here. It goes all the way around. Cool little, uh, dining room. And it's a wing launch coaster. I think it's a pretty good use of a coaster choice for a spooky area. It's like a bat wing. All right, the Baron's Curse, 1.7 kilometers in length, 74 miles per hour. The biggest drop is 47 meters and 12 inversions on this bad boy. Uh, again, no shortage of length on these coasters throughout this experience today. Tons of like, not only is it 19 coasters, two dark rides, water rides and all that stuff, but they're all like one to two kilometers in length and just jam-packed thematically start to finish very very impressive all right let's check out this dark ride uh wing launch Toledo's. Great atmosphere, great lighting, great sound effects, great use of animatronics as well. Everything about that was awesome. I really like this gurgling acid stuff that you had going on over there. Very, very cool. All right, let's get back to the main path here. I don't know what's going on, where we're going next. Uh, I want to make sure we didn't miss any rides. I can't even tell which ones we've been on and which ones we haven't but I'm pretty sure we got them all for spooky, right? Yeah, it appears to be that way. All right, I'm actually really looking forward to this next area, the Western. I haven't been to a, a mind-blowing Western area of a park in a hot minute throughout the, like, I don't know, last month's worth of park spotlights. We've seen only a handful of Western areas, none that really taken me back that much, but some that were pretty good. This one, in particular looks very interesting you would have saw from the b-roll there's a lot of interesting coasters interesting interactions between the coasters as we've seen so far throughout this park the mine train in particular looks really cool 
Was that called the Bald Bandit? Burn, 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 Burke's Remedies. I also recognize that. So I think this is going to be the RMC. Which also seems to have a pretty nutty layout with tons of trains running on it. It's a log flume. Seriously? I didn't even know there was a... Okay, we're going on a log flume. It's the bandit raids. Okay. Bam, 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 bam. Let's uh, find the log in the station. You are it. All right. Not what I expected at all, but I'm here for it. We're going on a log flume adventure. Ooh, nighttime. Let's go. Animatronic that does the little kick. Oh my god! <laughs> you kick the rock, the giant boulder. Oh, that was incredible. Wow. I love these uh, animatronic cinematic Hollywood scene uh, log flumes. We saw one a few weeks ago that just blew my mind. I was literally screaming. Uh, it was great. This is this is also very, very good. That guy shot the wagon. It went down, knocked over the uh, water tower. It's amazing. Well done. What he's gonna do with that dynamite. I love the way you set up these animatronics. A little bit of uh, foreshadowing there. That's amazing. <laughs> oh my god, look at that RMC back there. Looks a little crazy. I'm excited about this mine train coaster though. Look at that. Okay, let's uh, let's see what he's gonna do with the TNT here. Oh my god. Amazing. Oh yeah, and then we have our uh, adventure slash Aztec area to go on last. Wow. Tons going on in this park. <laughs> that guy's crouched over. I just... <laughs> I love this foreshadowing. Little shootout. Great use of these animatronics. I have rarely seen this many used on a log flume before. Very happy to see it. Oh! I like the little hot springs thing that you did there. Very, very fun. Part of me wants to ride the monorail, but because it's going to be stopping at seven different stops, it'll be more waiting than it'll be riding. But I still appreciate that you uh, built it around the whole park. It's pretty cool. All right. And there is the Bandit Raid Log Flume Adventure. That was quite fun, actually, and threw me for a surprise because we're going up the queue. Oh, bandit. What did I say? I thought that said bald. B-A-L. Bandit bald. Oh, it's Foxy. She's mad that you took the uh, Foxy signage off her rocket ship. Okay. Or maybe I am. <laughs> the rodeo. This has got to be the RMC. All right? Burr, 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 burr. 
Yeah, I gotta, I gotta give credit where credit is due. This park has not had a silent moment ever. Not once. The coasters have music, the queues have music, the areas have music. I don't even know where you're putting these speakers. It's amazing. Oh, that's the first one I've actually noticed. Now that I'm looking for them. Okay, it is the rodeo. It is green across the board. It is a kilometer length. That's 69 miles per hour. Seven inversions, four airtime counts. And uh, this one's pulling in now. It's a small train, so we can ride the back and not be that far back. In fact, I'm gonna do car five. Let's check it out. Pretty interesting use of the uh, coaster elements there. At first, I wasn't uh, the biggest fan of that block section being there and cutting our momentum because we we're just soaring through and then it just kind of like stopped and waited. But then I see that you did that to trim the speed so that we get that inverted hang time just stalled. Uh, and also you ended up getting like what, four, six. Oh no, three trains, six cars. Yeah, so you get more throughput and more coasters running on the train itself or the on the coaster so that's pretty cool all right so when i was talking about the pirate area needing a little bit more landscaping a little bit more of this this is an example of what i was talking about i want to see those mountains those hills those uh, landmarks and climb my way up through the uh piratess piratiness of it all and that's why i think i was so captivated by this western area a lot of times people can make these western areas somewhat flat and why do that when you can make these amazing red rock hills mountainscapes and then it's it creates for such a good opportunity to run a mine train through it all not only did you do a mine train but you have what do we have here a giant inverted boomerang that you converted into a, an oil rig which is pretty interesting and it is a mining company 2.3 kilometers in length we've got planet bluegrass playing on this one uh there's all the stats if you want to see them this one's taken off is this the one did it just did it just leave the station it did oh my god okay we got to go to the back oh my god this looks like so much fun triple lift i think this is a mobius Oh my goodness gracious. What is happening right now? Are they gonna be interacting with each other and we're just waiting? Oh my God, let's go. Freaking wild. 
the triple lift is awesome. The way it navigates the terrain is freaking spectacular. I love it. What a vibe. This is how you do it. This is a mine train coaster. Oh my freaking goodness. Freaking done and again with the foreshadowing as we go through for the final pass through the final lap we saw the underground giant inverted boomerang entrance we went right by the queue loading up for the other coaster that was a uh, mine train coaster worthy of the soundtrack planet bluegrass ever since i fell in love with that soundtrack to one of the craziest mine train experiences out there uh everybody started using it to try to get a reaction out of me and i've come to say you gotta impress me now if you're gonna use that soundtrack guys you gotta go over the top you have to do something impressive because the first time i heard planet bluegrass on a mine train coaster i was blown away so now you gotta one up it you got to do it better and better and now everyone's just you putting it on coasters that the song doesn't even get going it is such a long soundtrack and that 2.3 kilometer experience did it justice it was a vibe it was entertaining it had feel good uh, vibes all the way through it was amazing uh the triple lift idea with the uh inverted boomerang going right over top of it was phenomenal and then as we uh came through on the final lap the mine train comes soaring through here uh the inner workings of the actual mine train itself was great the outside going around the rolling hills was phenomenal we're gonna have to take a look at it from a bird's eye view because you can't really appreciate it i mean from the perspective of the coaster it's great but seeing it from a bird's eye view and how the coaster just rolls over the hills incredibly well done it's not easy to smooth the track on such angles and curve it and bank it that mine train was phenomenal by far my favorite coaster in the park so far all right the oil driller it is uh 1.6 kilometers in length we're gonna go seat view for this guy and off we freaking go
And that, again, ladies and gentlemen, is how it's done. Oftentimes, boomerangs can be a hit or a miss, and that is definitely a hit right there. Uh, using it to interact with the environment, starting it underground like that, pulling us out, kind of uh, emerging from deep within, and then dropping us back down, going up and down, up and down, constantly beautiful terrain, menacing mine shafts, and uh, back and forth. Great interaction. Uh, again, here's a look at the mine train coaster itself. The way you smooth the terrain on an angle like that whoo that takes patience it takes precision so much effort gone into making that coaster track stick and then when it does go up and over the terrain like that you built some custom supports and some bridge work there and you see that everywhere right this is what I love to see, you guys. These captivating compositions where the coaster is exploring uh, a really beautiful, dynamic landscape. The coaster even goes into the waterfall there. And this is what I would have loved to see more of from your pirate stuff. So take inspiration from your own work. What you did here, I think, uh, in my opinion, this is the best landscape of the entire park. It's open, but it's interesting. It's intricate. There's so much going on here with the, uh, the hills and the elevation elevation and the depth and we get to explore underneath it but it looks amazing above ground the only downside is we can't really navigate there's no there's no path work for the guests to come up here there's no rides or anything like that but the rides themselves were exceptional so if you could find a way to like do what you did here for your pirate area and so forth i think you got something really nice going on here i i really quite thoroughly enjoyed the experiences uh crafted over here absolutely incredibly well done so we had a uh rmc a river rapids inverted boom meringue as well as the mine train coaster what's going on over here i feel like i've seen this uh didn't galcyon build that for his westworld coaster that was also a western coaster yeah that was great so we have one more final area to go the lost jungle very very cool wow freaking we this has been an experience uh all the coasters have been riveting over the top there's the park express again what a blast the creator asked for feedback and i asked you guys at the top of the video to give your feedback where's the queue for this freaking thing over here yeah the only thing i would say is get custom fonts and dress up your your signage and your welcoming <laughs> entrance for your coasters a bit more just uh you have good names you have good thematic uh boarding stations and then the rides themselves express what the name was it's all very cohesive uh so the only thing i would take over the top to add a little bit of more personality a little bit more characteristic is just dressing up that custom font on the actual coaster signs themselves as well as opening up the path around them so you can see them from a distance so that they're a focal point they draw you in normally we're walking down these narrow corridors and it's like oh it's right there it's it's hard to catch a big sign when it's you're so close to it or you don't have room to zoom out if that makes sense so just a little bit more breathing room for your pathways will go a long way in the future that's pretty much all i got for you in feedback everything else has been amazing we have another 1.5 kilometer amazing invert coaster here let's check it out
good googly moogly. Much to the point that I made about the uh, western area, I really like the verticality of the jungle. I felt like we got... What was the coaster called? I was going to say, I feel like Forgotten Valley. Okay, yeah, I felt like we got lost in the jungle. In the valley. Oh, uh, the Forgotten Valley. We really got a sense of the depth going up high, going down low. Got really into the uh, swampiness, the weeds of the jungle there. Ooh, the crystal mine. All right, this has me pretty excited. What have you done differently with the mine for the uh, adventure coaster than you have the mine train coaster? Mine train coaster set the bar really, really high. That's gonna be hard to beat for me, but seeing a possible second mine themed coaster, but done for the jungle, more of an archeological dig site of some sorts, maybe. Oh, it's a swinging mine train. Very, very good. Very good. Basically every single coaster type that you could possibly think of is in this park and done. What the heck is up with that track? Oh my God. 2.2 kilometers in length, 10 airtime counts. Oh, spoiler alert. This is the one leaving. Oh my God. I think we're in for a treat. I was gonna say that the uh, mine train coaster, the last one we went on was 2.3 kilometers and it set the bar very high and it's gonna be hard to beat. This one is almost matching it in length and duration, but it's a mi swinging mine train coaster and in the jungle. So thematically, it's gonna be completely different. And I'm pretty excited to see what you did to differentiate the two. Let's go. Jesus, these guests are getting really handsy with us. <laughs> oh my goodness. And it's even more noticeable because it's the first coaster we've been on so far that hasn't had music. And all we're noticing is how silent it is and how many hands we have in our freaking face. Uh, and it's driving me absolutely nuts. But this Crystal Cavern is phenomenal. Very, very cool. I think what we, uh, this is really the only view that allow us to actually swing. So if I change the perspective, we won't have the hands, but we won't have the swing. So I'll see if I can come up with something else. And, uh, how about for the second ride, we will get some music on this. I'm actually quite surprised that the creator actually forgot to put a soundtrack on this. Adventure Coaster. What? There is a soundtrack. Interesting. The audio just didn't work. So what if we do a look forward? I don't think it'll swing, but we won't have flailers. And uh, we could see the train in front of us now, which should give us uh, a little bit of a different experience overall. And up we go. And now the music seems to be working. Very strange that it wasn't. So the one time we didn't have music, it was not the creator's fault. And was there a sequencer on this before? Now it's nighttime. I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. Yeah, this seems a lot different now, doesn't it? What a difference a little bit of music makes, though, right? I keep telling you guys. 
Put music on your coasters. And there it is. A little bit on the redundant side in terms of the Crystal Cavern. Uh, I really like what you did with the Crystal Cave, but it became a little bit monotonous, uh, a little bit samey. While a very fun coaster layout and a very explorative mine train experience, I think what would have uh, been better had it come out of the cave time to time and explored a just to remind us that we're in the jungle, right? Just give us a little bit of a taste of that fresh air, the greenery popping up through all this stuff and then back down into the uh, crystal cavern again would have really broken up the contrast a little bit. That's pretty much the only thing I would suggest. It was pretty vast and interesting. Is this an exit? It definitely is. All right, we have a launch coaster over here and then this brings us back to Northland. I uh, have no idea how many coasters we've been on or if we've been on all of them. And where's the queue for this guy? Oh, look at the cute little ATM. Where is the queue? They're in line. It's gotta be back here. Yeah, as I was saying, the Forgotten Valley. All of that depth is very nice. Really good terrain work on the uh, jungles here. The Mountain Snake. This could potentially be our very last and final coaster of the day. My recording before editing is clocking in at an hour and 50 minutes. We're almost hitting that epic, legendary two hour duration on this here park spotlight today. And I didn't even ride all of the coasters at both day and night. I knew with as many coasters as we had, I had to try to pick the very best perspective for each one, uh, but very well could have been a lot of these could be great nighttime experiences we did basically just a few at night mainly the spooky ones and the giga coaster but uh i think that's more than enough that just goes to show how much content is actually in this park though another two kilometer long coaster at 76 miles per hour eight inversions a little bit of air time as well okay we'll do track view for the smoothest ride experience possible and then i will hit up the ride list and make sure we haven't forgotten anything i saw a little alpine area at the back of the park there and i don't remember going over there so hopefully there's something over there in the snowy area for us uh before we end things off but for now, let's check this out.
ho, ho, ho. If that is, in fact, the very last coaster of the day, we would definitely be ending on a high note. That was exhilarating. Oh, okay, it's not. I can tell you right now. So there's this little nook back here. I don't know where it's going. There's a queue somewhere. Is this the queue? Uh, I saw this in the B-roll. There's a bobsled coaster on this alpine mountain. A little bonus mini theme. Arctic Alpine bobsled, one kilometer in length. Doesn't surprise me at this point. 51 miles per hour. The biggest drop is zero meters, just a, a steady decline through and through. Oh my goodness. Uh, in fact, I usually ride the bobsleds like this. I'm wondering if I should, no. I think the proper way to ride them is like this, right? You wanna see, you don't, you wanna see over the, the, the track a little bit. Okay, well, I'm pretty stoked about this. We're going right to the top of this alpine mountain and we're going for a little ski ride. Let's go. And there it is, pretty standard bobsled. Didn't do anything over the top. I don't really know how you make them over the top. I've seen very few incredible bobsleds, uh, but from the outside, it all looks to be pretty exhilarating. Looks interesting, right? Um, is it, I guess bobsleds are just a slow, steady decline left and right. How do you make them more interesting? How do you uh, actually get impactful visuals on that because you're hugging the sides of this kind of tube uh can you go back up at some point cross bridges go underneath things i don't really know but overall it's pretty solid uh for a bobsled i get pretty excited about the bobsleds because they're so rarely used and i'm still uh holding out for that one that just wows me that wasn't it here today but it was still pretty good overall all right here's a look at the park from a bird's eye view let me hit the ride list up and make sure we haven't missed anything all right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is all of the rides. We didn't miss any. Look at that. Holy freaking googly moogly. Where do we even uh, talk about this? It is an end-to-end, -end, quite literal end-to-end -end mega park. Rarely do we see people building them to border to border. Not necessary by any means. Uh, definitely now doable with the new rig, even though we got like 20 FPS. Uh, back in the day, this would have just been a slog fest. I don't know how good the rig is of the builder building this, but you're definitely torturing yourself once it gets to a certain point uh, if you're going this big. Now, not that that's a critique or anything. It was more content for us. It was a full two-hour episode. There was tons of amazing stuff to look forward to but i definitely feel like you know you're limited by the borders of the game the developers never intended people to actually build border to border they gave us such a big map so that you could create more organic parks right you could have the lake here a little bit more roundish and bring things around and have a little bit of that open breathing space so that you don't get this cut line where you're you know the giga coaster had theming on one side but nothing on the other you don't have to do that if it's a little bit more inward then you can kind of uh, you know, fill that area around it, but then not really go straight to the border. So it's really just a personal choice. This builder obviously felt like they just couldn't stop. They wanted to do more. And I definitely applaud you for that. Doing an end-to-end, -end, quite literal mega park like this is quite a feat. It is quite an accomplishment and it is, you know, absolutely insane. Uh, so with that, 
it does feed back into some feedback is I think you can definitely do it a little bit smaller in the future so that you get more of that organic shape. You get more of that breathing room and then think about your layout a little bit more, right? You come into the park entrance, big uh, open plaza, big main street, and we can clearly see where we want to go, what rides we're going to go on, where the queues are. We see the, uh, the signs for the coasters, tall and proud with big fonts, and we have a clear line of sight to them. And I can go, okay, I want to go on that. And then that, oh, I see the gateway to pirate area. I see the gateway to, you know, Adventureland. And I'm going to go to those after I hit up these things that I can see in my uh, line of sight, right? Everything uh, was blocked by the line of sight. There's so much going on, uh, heading down these narrow, narrow corridors. Even uh, the only other pathway going over here was very hard to find. Use the wider paths, open things up a little bit more, make the paths a little bit more flowy talk about that a little bit further with the western area as much as i love this landscape and i think that's great the whole main walking area for the western area is this and it comes across as a little bit sparse crampy and not very open and inviting it doesn't give me that wow factor what we need here is to open up this area a little bit more and have us walking through a western town with shops facilities well, kind of like what you got started here but then gave up on <laughs> right open that up create a bustling atmosphere try to themify everything just really bring punch it out so when we walk into the western area we get this beautiful main street this big inviting area a long strip but we can see all the different rides and attractions that we want to go on uh you definitely do a great job like where i could say you've nailed it is all the ride experiences were entertaining thematic long adventure storytelling coasters that were just impressive start to finish. What I would probably try to do is, you know, make these small dense opening areas for the theme park, make the theme park. You go in, you see the shops, you see the facilities, you see all this stuff, a big open plaza, a beautiful fountain centerpiece, a couple flat rides off to the side, then coaster entrance, coaster entrance, coaster entrance. We see all these different attractions and then use that landscape like you have here to simulate them all right? All of this space, we don't have to build park here. We don't have to navigate the paths up here. We can do it just like you have it here, but just open it up and themify it a little bit more. Uh, as I felt when I was walking through the whole park, it felt a bit linear. It felt a little bit on rails. We're going through these narrow paths. It goes into queue, get off, back to narrow path, go down, queue, back to narrow path. It was very easy in terms of an episode. We didn't miss any rides. It just led us through one narrow track all the way around the park, but I also felt like the choice was taken from me there's something about like an mkp park or some of these uh, other legend builders that we've seen in the past where you walk into a themed area and you go wow there's a lot of stuff here i can see these x y z three four five rides that i want to go on i could see the entrance to the other area now now that i could see it all and it's all in front of me let me take my time for a second and appreciate the theming let me walk around this fountain let me walk around the centerpiece let me walk over to that uh, point of interest let me go up to this vista point and see what the it has to show and once i've you know taken a, my time to look at all this stuff my plan is to head over to coaster x and then once i've gone on that i already know where the entrance for coaster y is and and z and i can kind of uh sort of uh narrow down what i want to do when i'm gonna do it what order i'm gonna do it and as i'm making my way to those things i can kind of appreciate the details soak in the scenery take a walk around leisurely enjoy my time through here this will a little bit more chaotic as I was just being shot down these like claustrophobic paths to go to this ride to this ride to this ride to this ride and while the rides themselves were insanely entertaining and absolutely uh exhilarating I just felt like there needed there needed to be a moment in the park where it just opened up let it let it breathe let it rest if that makes sense, right? And with such an end-to-end -end mega park using up all of that space, uh, it's actually quite impressive to me that there was no moment of breathing, that there was no open space, there was no resting. You just crammed so much in here that you didn't even have room for wider paths. You didn't have room for plazas or vista points or benches or giant food courts. None of that. It's just ride on top of ride on top of ride, which to me is kind of like crazy, chaotic, and impressive. So while it is a bit of a critique saying like, just give yourself a little bit more breathing room, it's also on the other hand, a compliment 
because I'm very impressed by how many coasters, dark rides, water rides, transport rides. There's like almost 30 attractions in this whole park between uh, the 20 coasters, dark rides, and, and transport, and, tr uh, and water rides. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, that, that's absolutely nuts considering this isn't a spaghetti bowl. I have videos on this channel where I'm like 30 roller coasters and we go in and it's a spaghetti bowl. It's just one coaster layered onto another and then there's nothing, uh, there's no rhyme or reason to it. And it's just crazy madness. I actually do feel like you had seven themed areas and you took us through an experience. Each of those areas had multiple rides and attractions. It was very precise. It, it was deliberate. For that reason, I definitely commend you for that. So to my previous point that I was giving, by not making things end to end on the borders giving yourself some breathing room you're actually going to have to cut some space out to open things up to create more plazas to create more park entrance areas uh themed area entrances uh, food courts and uh little bustling areas with centerpieces and so you know maybe in the future aim for four to five themes cut two or three out and then don't go to the borders trim things back a little bit and open stuff up a little bit more that way we can find our way through the uh, the park a little easier make some decisions along the way and make a little bit of a roadmap for ourselves as and a plan as we're going through it rather than kind of being led through a uh, rotation on a singular path the whole way through this massive park so that would be my biggest point of feedback but it's a very small bit of feedback considering how amazing the experience is because that feedback in comparison to the overall package the overall fun factor of what we had today is basically insignificant because the park itself the experience it's, itself was just mind-blowing I had so much fun on all of the rides and I would definitely say you're like a master or legend builder at crafting these well-designed intricate storytelling explorative experiences even as I mentioned with this uh water coaster splashing down and looking at all this viking stuff if you built this stuff or not you downloaded it on the workshop I don't know and I don't really care you designed it you put it all together in fascinating ways that blew my mind and that's what you're doing right so I would just definitely say keep doing what you're doing and just uh, scale it back a little bit more so you can give yourself more space. And once you have a little bit more space, you'll probably find that you can do even more with uh, your creative environments and explorative coasters and stuff like that. Try to go for 12 coasters instead of 20, but then uh, open things up and add a little bit more theming to the themed areas and a little bit more walking space. That's pretty much all of my feedback. If you guys agree or disagree let me know down in the comments below and let the creator know as well but overall an absolutely amazing creator here today and again from the workshop they are unranked so come join us on discord druk luft detlev i guess the last little point is give us a little bit more information on your submission next time you didn't really tell us how long you worked on the park uh you didn't tell us how much of it you built how much you downloaded or anything like that so uh, a little bit more information both on your submission as well as the uh the description on the steam page would definitely be appreciated for these intros so keep doing what you're doing an absolutely stellar theme park here today what did you guys think and why let me know down in the comments below and that is going to do it for us in this episode of park spotlight thank you all so much for watching and i hope you have an absolutely wonderful day bye now <laughs>